You might not have heard of the Chinese car company BYD. It stands for Bring Your Dog. Or at least that's what the Chinese man told me at the wet market. Anyway, I want to answer a few questions in this video. Is the BYD seal as good as the new Tesla Model 3? Would I, as a self-confessed Tesla addict, buy one? And the big question, is it a Tesla... Oh, I can't do it, I just can't stoop that low. Is it a Tesla killer? I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Let's get into it, literally. Okay, here I am in a BYD seal. About to go for my first ever test drive. I'm rather excited. As usual, I'm overwhelmed with buttons. It's quite extraordinary to see what a car is like when it's just full of knobs. Okay, here we go. But before I go anywhere further, let me just stop. Hey BYD, navigate to Bell End. Here's what I found. Which would you like? No, none of those. Hey BYD. Sorry, again. What once more? Which list number do you want? List number? None. Off. Sorry, I don't think I understand. Hey BYD. Navigate to Bell End. Here's what I found. Which would you like? That's it. I missed that. Try saying the list number. Bell End. Bell End. Rally Regis. Starting navigation. Yes. Oh, that's it. Okay, fans. How do we turn these fans down? Um, fans down, AC, fans down. There we go, okay. Home screen. Where's my sat-nav gone? I've lost my sat-nav, where is it? Hey BYD, show sat-nav. Settings is already open. Uh, what? Oh, this is not a great start, is it? Come on. Light scooter cars, ADAS, new energy, vehicle health, light greetings, AC, notifications. Ah, sat-nav, there we go. I have to press the brakes to brake. That's strange. Um, yeah, so it doesn't just roll to a halt like a Tesla. Why doesn't it just use the regen and just stop? Maybe that's in settings. The heated steering wheel is lovely. The heated seat is lovely. The seats feel really, um, yeah, really good. What? What? Why are you bleeping at me? I've just discovered that my indicator stalk is on the wrong side. It's on the right hand side of the steering column. What's it doing over there? Oh, I'm going left. Oh my word. I'm indicating the wrong way. Ooh. Brakes are a bit snappy. Brake pedal's weird. You can press it and it's very squishy, even at a standstill. Usually that's quite solid, isn't it? I actually feel rather high up in this car compared to a Model 3. It feels a lot taller. Um, the view out the front, the windscreen is a lot smaller, a lot shorter. So you do feel very enclosed in here but it's more encompassing I guess it's, it's kind of nice if you were uh, if you like that feeling oh, these brakes are Jesus they feel a bit strange okay the navigation seems quite nice I've got a great big map obviously to my left and then I've got another display showing me which lane to be in and right in front of me I've got this nice 10 inch screen just telling me my speed a few other details my range very strange having the indicators on the wrong side I say wrong side is what? If I go slightly over the speed limit, it starts bleeping at me. I'm only travelling in the city at the moment, but it's pretty quiet in here. It's pretty refined. The steering feels feels okay. It's um, it's a nice driving position. I kind of like it. I am honestly quite overwhelmed. Coming from a Tesla for four and a half years and into any car, not just this one, there's just so many buttons and things to do. It just seems so complicated. I must say the glass roof is lovely. It's a nice full roof of glass. The materials in here are really nice as well. You've got nice plush suede stuff on the uh, door trims there. Vegan leather seats, which are fully heated and ventilated. Oh, it's got creep on, so when you let go of the brake, it starts creeping forward. Something I'd like to change. What? What? Okay, you've got a little bit of regen, but it's not a lot at all. I'd like more. Navigation seems quite responsive. It really does feel like it's great quality. Totally overwhelming for my brain, used to a Tesla, but it, you know, it's still really nice. Good job. Travelling along at 40 mile an hour, it's rather peaceful experience, I must say. Oh, the road. <laughs> yeah, it turned out the tarmac was rather nice. Oh, look at me reversing cameras. I've got a nice bird's eye view, 360 degree camera, and uh, yeah, the camera's great. Got HD cameras all the way around. The closer you get, 
the better you look, baby. <laughs> I don't want to turn it off. Put me in neutral. In fact, where's Park? Seriously, where? Oh, there's <laughs> Big P just there. <laughs> Bell End. Okay, while I'm parked up by these lovely red bins, I thought I'd just tell you a few more things. So, charging wise, you've got access to about a quarter of all Tesla superchargers in the UK and in Europe. But also if you buy a BYD car, you will get a 600 pound voucher, if you like, towards charging, which you have to use within the year. But then you also get a 15p off every kilowatt hour you charge using the Shell Recharge Rapid and Ultra Rapid Charging Network. So that's access to 500,000 Shell Recharge points across Europe. That's a lot, isn't it? Half a million charge points. And access to 7,000 Ubertricity chargers in the UK, and they're typically found on lamp posts in residential streets. So, you know, BYD are doing their best to help with charging too. A few other things to mention, this car is extremely well equipped. We've got semi-autonomous driving mode, We've got eco, normal, sports and snow mode for your driving variations, if you like. Safety wise, you've got a five star NCAP safety rating, which is really good. It's got AEB, which is autonomous emergency braking. It's got speed monitoring, 360 degree camera, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, lane tracing, blind spot monitoring, stability control, traction control. Ticks a lot of safety boxes, this. This is not a cheap Chinese car. They've paid a lot of attention to the safety aspects. You know, these speed limit warning chimes have been driving me crazy so far, but I think I'll be able to turn them off somewhere. It also comes with a really decent warranty of six years or 93,205 miles for the whole car. A bit of a strange amount, it's usually in kilometers. And eight years, 125,000 miles for the battery. So that's reassuringly good as well. If I had to describe this car so far, I'd say it's a very competent, comfortable, relaxed tourer to drive. I'm very impressed. I know what you're thinking, another beautiful location. What do you think this is, Top Gear? Anyway, this is the BYD Seal entry level, which is £45,695. So that's almost £6,000 more than an entry level Tesla Model 3. So. You know, you have to sort of weigh up the pros and cons here. I'm struggling to find what I prefer with this car over a te over the new Tesla Model 3, I must say, but, uh, but this is an excellent car. It's really nice. It's very plush inside. I'm um, really enjoying driving it. It's very nice. The um, user interface and the softwares, you know, it's a bit complicated when you first start perhaps, but I'm, I'm sure you'll get used to it quite quickly. It's rather fast and, and intuitive and responsive. It's not Tesla's though, it, that's the problem. It's never gonna be, is it? Because Tesla have just got such a lead in the software advantage here. It's just the, you know, the Apple of cars. But you know, compared to, you know, Volkswagen software or, or anybody else's, this is, this is pretty good. And it comes with a pretty similar spec to the Model 3 as well. It's got 323 miles of WLTP range, 300 brake horsepower and a zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. So it's no slug, it's quite quick. I've also got a few different driving modes as well. I've just discovered sports mode, which you know tightens everything up and makes everything a bit more sensitive. At the moment, I'm at 95% state of charge and it's telling me I've got 300 miles to go. So there's plenty of range, fantastic. What I thought I was going to test drive today was the actual top of the range BYD Seal Excellence, which comes in at 48,695 pounds. That has 523 brake horsepower. It's a single speed automatic like this one and has a claim range of 354 miles WLTP and a 3.8 seconds, zero to 60. And in case you forget that, it actually tells you on the back of the car as well, on the badge 3.8S. Both cars are limited to 112 miles an hour, which I think is fair enough, don't you? And both variations come with an 82.5 kilowatt hour LFP battery. So this is different chemistry to typical lithium ion batteries. Um, it's what BYD calls its blade batteries, which is just LFP. So it's lithium ion phosphate batteries. So you can charge them to 100% with no degradation over time. And they're, they're even that bit, bit safer as well. Do believe BYD banged a nail into their battery cell just to prove how safe it was. And, you know, no thermal runaway or explosions or anything like that. So a lot of car companies are shifting away from any batteries that contain cobalt and nickel and sort of rarer earth materials, if you like. This comes with 150 kilowatt charging speed. So that's on par with Volkswagen or you know, Kia EV6s. Not quite to Tesla's 170 kilowatt speed, but pretty good. You should be able to top up from something like 10 to 80% in half an hour at a rapid charger. 
And if you didn't know, this is the third model that BYD have come out with. Already in Europe, BYD offer the Atto 3 and the Dolphin, both of which I've been in and seen the interiors. They're um, drastically different to this, I have to say. This is far more plush and nicer quality. The other two are a little bit cheaper, but that's the point, isn't it? They're trying to be cheaper cars, so it's not going to be as plush as this, is it? Obvious. BYD have been rapidly expanding across Europe with 230 retail outlets across 19 countries in the first year. They really do mean business. Here's my little gripe with BYD. When they say they've produced 3 million new energy vehicles in 2023, this is rather misleading because BYD includes the sales of their hybrid cars because they also make cars with engines. They did, however, deliver just short of 1.6 million battery electric vehicles in 2023, meaning that they did outpace Tesla in total electric vehicles sold in the last three months of last year. Credit where it's due, well done BYD. It's not bring your dog, it's build your dreams. What a plonker. Although it does about make as much sense, doesn't it? Huh. Something I've had to check out today is BYD's party trick, which is this. Okay, very nice. I like the navigation that way, as well as that way sometimes. What a nice little feature. However, the thing I've noticed in BYD's when I've previously sat in them is this very screen is a bit wonky. So let's find out, shall we? Oh, it's bang on. That's good. But is the car on a wonk? No, it's fine. But if I show you this one on the website, take a look at this. Now this. Now this. Wonky. Not wonky. Wonky. Not wonky. Wonky. Not wonky. What's going on? That would drive my OCD crazy, personally. This one is just fine. Okay, I've had a couple of hours driving it now. I've got to say I'm really impressed. I think it's really nice. It feels like a really sturdy quality car. I don't like the steering as much as I like a Tesla's. It's just not quite as responsive as, as I'd like. I'd rather the regen be a lot more aggressive as well and actually keep me stopped at traffic lights rather than allow me to roll away. Don't particularly like that very much. But the big question, can I get back into Birmingham? No idea where I am, as usual. Hey BYD, hey BYD, navigate to BYD showroom. Audio muted, I don't mute it. Yeah, I do have a few risk factors. What? Hey BYD, navigate to BYD service centre. Where shall we go? To the BYD showroom. Hey BYD, navigate to BYD showroom. <laughs> navigate to BYD. <laughs> Just tell me where you want to go and I'll find a route for you. BYD showroom. I couldn't find any results. Which place do you want to find? BYD showroom in Birmingham. How do we turn the smegging radio off? Here. You reach, your bones reach their maximum density in your 20s, which is one of the reasons I think. That's useful. Okay, I found it. Let's go. Let's get rid of that. I've just got rid of... Oh just got rid of the navigation. Oh, honestly, come on. Navigate. Is there a recent button? No. Oh, let me lost it. Hey, by... Oh, what are you? Hey, Siri. Oh. Hey, BYD. Navigate to BYD Service Centre. I got Wade Building Services in GB. Want to drive there? No. No, I do not. Take me There's to... no other result. Well, I came from there. It must exist. Hey, BYD. Hey, BYD. I don't know how to, let me type it in. BYD Birmingham. Yes, it's, they've saved it in there. It's one of the favorites. That makes sense, doesn't it? Right, 25 minutes away. Let's go, take me there. Guidance will start now. Jesus, all right, calm down. Why is guidance starting just from this speaker down here? That's weird. <laughs> Whee. Tight round here. Whee! You are over the speed limit. No, I'm not. I'm not over the speed limit though. It does feel rather big and slightly cumbersome. I'll be honest, it's got quite a lot of roll round the corners. Quite squishy steering. It's nowhere near as precise and as tight as a Tesla Model 3. But it's still decent enough. It's a shut up! But on the whole, I've really enjoyed driving it. It's been it's 
been nice. There is no way to turn that bonding off. And a lot of the time, it thinks you're in a 30 zone when you're actually in a 60 zone. What? I don't even know what some of these bleeps are bleeping me for. There's nothing around me. What's that for? Why? That's more distracting. I'm trying to find out what you're bleeping at me for. I'm doing 25! Honestly, BYD, this incessant nagging needs to be turned off. I guess it's just a software update away from giving people the opportunity. We already live enough in a nanny state, thank you, without China getting involved. It's warning me that this is a 20 zone. I am in a 30 zone. Well, there we go then. If I had to sum this car up in one word, I'd say bleepy, and then I'd say spongy. I actually feel a little bit queasy. It's very squishy all over. The steering, the brakes, the body roll, the comfort of it. I do actually feel a bit sick, which is a bit strange. I haven't felt travel sick for years. Maybe I've had a bad sandwich, who knows? But I've got to be honest, I'm very much looking forward to getting back in my Tesla. God, that's really strange. I feel really quite nauseous and sick. I haven't even been caning it. I've just been driving around the city for the past 20 minutes. That's strange, isn't it? Oh, there's a BYD electric bus. There's loads of those around here. There's another one. There's also a very weird noise. Every time you start moving, it's, it's kind of like that. I'm not sure where it's coming from. I wanted to love the BYD seal, I really did. I do love the looks, the lights, the wheels, the overall quality. I love the fact that it's got vehicle to load so you can reverse the flow of electricity out of your car and power stuff. And I massively support BYD as a company for their commitment to EVs. But I went from loving it to hating it in just two hours. The incessant beeping and nagging drove me insane. No one pedal driving option makes for a jerky, unnecessary braking nuisance. The spongy steering, brakes and handling made me feel sick in the end. And although the seat was initially comfortable and supportive at the sides, not enough tilt adjustment at the base made it uncomfortable over time. Practicality wise, the boot is a third smaller than a Tesla Model 3's. The user interface and software is nowhere near to Tesla's standard. But the big one, it's still just too expensive. Almost £6,000 more than a new Tesla Model 3. It just makes no sense. I don't see anything here that would make it worth that much more. Is the seal as good as a Model 3? Short answer, no. Would I want one then? I'm afraid not even if it were free. And quite simply, I wouldn't want to be without all of the Tesla benefits and the way better driving experience. Is it a Tesla killer? More like a sanity killer with the nagging. At best, it's healthy competition. I really am sorry BYD, this is not the video I wanted to make. I really wanted to love it, but I wish BYD every success in the future. Why? Because they have done what every legacy auto company should have been doing since Tesla released the Model S back in 2012. Evolving into serious, dedicated electric car companies. And judging on BYD's 29 successful years as a battery manufacturer first, that has transitioned into now the world's largest EV manufacturer, I think they'll do alright, whatever my opinion. Up next is my new Tesla Model 3 test drive reaction video. See what you think, but don't just take my word for it. Book yourself a test drive in a SEAL and a Model 3 and judge for yourself. And then let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks as always to my fantastic Patreon supporters who are right here. I'm Will, this is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.